in another book put out by Russell called The Scientific Outlook written as far back as 1931 he has this to say now this this kind of writing for the, the Bertrand Russell Society that did recruit lots of people from the Ivy League universities to work for this agenda all hoping they would be part of a future elite it was taken, this stuff was taken seriously and still is this is still the same agenda this is what he said from that book scientific societies are as yet in their infancy it is to be expected that advances in physiology and psychology will give governments much more control over individual mentality than they now have even in totalitarian countries. Fitchie laid it down that education should aim at destroying free will so that after pupils have left school they shall be incapable throughout the rest of their lives of thinking or acting. Otherwise, than as their schoolmasters would have wished. For the heart of thinking, I'll repeat that. Scientific societies are as yet in their infancy. It is to be expected that advances in physiology and psychology will give governments much more control over individual mentality than they now have even in totalitarian countries. Fitchie laid it down that education should aim at destroying free will so that after pupils have left school they shall be incapable throughout the rest of their lives of thinking or acting otherwise than as their schoolmasters would have wished. Diet, injections and injunctions will combine from a very early age to produce the sort of character and the sort of beliefs that the authorities consider desirable. And any serious criticism of the powers that be will become psychologically impossible. Listen again. Diet. Injections. Injections. What have they gone after? All of the food. They've altered all of the food. Injections. Huh? You thought polio and all that was to prevent polio? These injections they give you? Mumps, rubella, whooping cough, etc. Really. We see the effects all around us as the IQ plummeted. Diet, injections, think, 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 injections, and injunctions will combine from a very early age very early age to produce the sort of character and the sort of beliefs that the authorities consider desirable and any serious criticism of the powers that be will become psychologically impossible are you beginning to understand why you get that stare that, that when the eyes turn off, you know, glazed, when you start telling them what's happening, are you beginning to see why? It's not that they just don't want to understand. You see, most cannot. They've been put out of action. Gradually, by selective breeding, selective breeding, The congenital differences between rulers and ruled will increase until they become almost different species. Uh, Again, for the harder thinking, I'll repeat it slowly. Gradually, by selective breeding. Remember, the guy who's telling you was a product of selective breeding as are all the the old, old nobilities. He goes on, the congenital differences between rulers and ruled will increase until they become almost different species. A revolt of the plebs would become 
as unthinkable as an organized insurrection of sheep against the practice of eating mutton. And that was also actually from the impact of science on society. 1953. This is from the Scientific Outlook, 1931. In like manner, the scientific rulers will provide one kind of education for ordinary men and women, and another for those who are to become holders of scientific power. That's what he means about the the technocrats that you, you, Brzezinski went on about, because these guys are all in the same big club at the top. Technocrats would have the scientific power. Ordinary men and women will be expected to be docile, industrious, punctual, thoughtless, and contented. Hmm? Do you know anyone who is like that? Ordinary men and women will be expected to be docile. Docile. Industrious, punctual, thoughtless, and contented. Of these qualities, probably contentment will be considered the most important. In order to produce it, all the researches of psychoanalysis, behaviorism, and biochemistry will be brought into play. All the boys and girls will er learn from an early age to be what is called cooperative. That is, this is the definition of his version of cooperative, to do exactly what everybody is doing. Co-op, cooperative. To do exactly what everybody is doing. Sameness. Initiative will be discouraged in these children, and insubordination, without being punished, will be scientifically trained out of them. Once again, once again, boys and girls, let's get out our stupor here. In like manner, the scientific rulers will provide one kind of education for ordinary men and women, and another for those who are to become holders of scientific power. Now that's why the, the, the foundations set up the different schemes and grants and bursaries at universities scholarships were the way to go all the scholarships were to recruit into the fold of technocrats obedient higher but yet still indoctrinated people that we control the rest there are actually layers of us you see layers of society and technocracy And cooperative is to do exactly what everybody is doing. Sameness, sameness, sameness. All saying the same thing, doing the same thing, having the same opinions. All from television and media and magazines and experts. Because they have no thoughts of their own. Initiative will be discouraged in these children. And insubordination without being punished will be scientifically trained out of them. Groupthink has been used in schools, you see, for years. The reason it was because Russell was the guy who came up with it all a long time ago and experimented on them. He, Huxley, and many others, using different techniques, and a lot of medical personnel too, and those involved in the creation of particular organisms that affect your physiology. The Charles Galton Darwin's who suggested that we change the hormonal streams of male and female. It's all been done. 